Hey guys, what is Objective All Trades here? And in front of you, you'll see most of the parts you'll need in order to complete my do-it-yourself custom sum build. And yeah, you guessed it by the title probably, but this is my do-it-yourself custom sum build. So yeah, here are all my parts. Now let's go through them so that you'll get an idea of what you need to build it. So for your actual filter, you'll need a three-cart drawer, but I obviously had to modify mine because it wouldn't fit under my aquarium stand. Uh, so I just have two drawers now. And that will house your filtration, and that goes in your, you need a storage bin. That'll just go in like so. Now this one's about 60 to 70 quarts, 16 to 17 gallons. And just get the biggest one you can find that'll fit under your tank stand, and make sure your drawer cart can fit under it as well. And this will house your, like, extra water and return pump and um, heater. So let's just take that out. Now for your mechanical filtration, we'll be using Polyfill Extra Loft Quilt Batting. This is basically the stuff you get that you overpay for at your fish store. Um, that does a good job. You get a lot of it. This I got this at Walmart for like eight bucks. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description for those of you that want it. Then for your biofiltration, uh, mine, mine hasn't arrived yet, but it's just pot scrubbies. Uh, cheap, flow lots of water, lots of bacteria. Yep. Then, here, here's my return pump. It's a 550 gallon per hour uh, Kedsum pump, I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll leave a link, it's on Amazon. And then, I think that's it for the main filtration parts. Let's go through the PVC parts now. So for your drain from your overflow box, uh, you'll need a one inch drain and that's to support the 550 gallons per hour that the pump is pushing. Just got five feet of that. And for the return, I got five feet of three-fourths inch PVC pipe. And then, obviously, you'll need some elbows for turns. These are my one-inch elbows and then a bunch of three-fourths inch elbows. Now, my overflow boxes, they, they, they also haven't arrived yet, but uh, it's just two specimen containers. I'll leave the link for those in the description as well. Um, the small one will be your intake, like on the inside of your tank, and then the large one will be hanging on the back. And I'll go through that once they arrive. Now let's see here. Here, let me go through my do-it-yourself bulkheads. So you just need um, a male adapter and a female adapter, and then an O-ring in the middle. And you can, um, I'm gonna be Teflon taping these as well, just in case. But um, this will go on the side where the water is, and then this is on the other side. You can trim it if it's too large. For instance, if I wanna open my drawers and it's not letting them open, I can just trim that. And then, for my water changes, I have a T here, and this will be on the return pipe, like there will be vinyl tubing going from the pump to this T with this barb. And then I'll have a riser and a ball valve, so basically, say the water is just going up to the return, I can just uh, open this ball valve, the water will want to go that way. Then um, I have a half inch tube here with a three-fourths to one-half inch barb adapter and that can just go to my, I have a door right there to my aquarium and that's how I'll do water changes. So lastly you'll need some PVC cement. This is just OT regular clear cement and it says on the container that it's for potable water so always make sure you have that on the container. You need some Teflon tape for your threads. Um, as you can see this is a threaded ball valve on both ends, some threads right here and I'll show you how to apply that once we need to apply that. So I think that's it for the actual parts overview. Now let's get into the actual nitty gritty of the build. All right, so now let's look at our um, drawer cart. So the first modification we have to do to this is uh, drill a hole in the top, and that'll be for your bulkhead, do-it-yourself bulkhead. Uh, and basically you just need the right hole for the, not the actual pipe diameter, but the diameter of the like threads like that and then once you drill that hole you can secure it and make sure that the o-rings are on the side of the water so for this it would be on the inside and the female adapter would actually go on the outside and the only other thing you have to do is uh, with your drawers you just have to mark and drill holes in the bottom uh, so that way water can flow through them so now let's go do that Alright, so it's very easy to uh, mark your holes. 
Uh, I'll just use this removed piece as a template, but you just want to draw the actual edge uh, that the drawer will be in so that the water doesn't seep through. And I have a really weak Sharpie, but you get the idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just draw out a border. Then, you know, this would work if this Sharpie was any good. I'll just draw some marks for, um, you know, just fun. Now what you want to do is get out your tape measure. I'm getting this out right now. And once you mark, or once you measure the edges of your border, for me, you can see it's about nine inches uh, from border to border. And then lengthwise, it's about 11 inches from border to border. And uh, you don't have to get crazy with the holes, just use like easy intervals. Like for me, I can't really do this while holding a camera. Uh, but um, you can just mark holes at a equal interval, say like one inch. So I'll just shorten this. So you can just you can just uh, make a mark over there, then over there, then over there, then over there. You get the idea. And then just do that the other way with uh, the tape measure. Just mark it along any equal interval. Just use one inch because uh, that way I'll get an even amount of holes. So yeah, now let's go uh, drill some holes in my actual nice, with my actual nice sharpie drawer. Alright, so now once you've marked your holes, what you want to do is um, take a drill or a soldering iron and uh, just make holes. Now, um, for those of you wondering, these are 5 30 seconds, or this is a 5 30 seconds drill bit. And the reason I decided not to go with the soldering iron is one, I've already used it to solder, so that means there is lead residue on it, and I don't want that, you know, being in the filter. And, um, second, it's just a lot less of a mess, like, because all I need is a drill and a drill bit, but with everything else, like, I would have to bring up a bunch of stuff, and also the only other thing I need is an extension cable. And then, yeah, it's just a lot cleaner. And, um, as you can see, I've already drilled some test holes here just to make sure they're okay and um, you can always deburr them with like a small knife or something or you can just um, you know just uh, pick out the excess with your finger and then the holes will be clean. Now obviously this does not have to be perfect the lines don't have to be perfect as long as water is flowing through that is all you need. So now let me adjust the camera and we can start drilling the rest of our holes for this drawer. Five minutes later. And occasionally you want to just walk over and um, deburr any of the holes that you've made. Sorry, let me get in the actual frame here. And you can just kind of pick around and get rid of any excess before continuing. And then wipe off your table. And then continue. A few minutes later. Alrighty, Emily, look at that. We have a finished drawer with all our holes, and they, it looks relatively nice. So now let's go test the flow and make sure that um, it's not too low or too high or anything. Alright, so what you want to do is just fill it with water and uh, then just make sure the flow is alright. So let me start up my hose. We can uh, fill it up, make sure I don't get any on my camera. And yeah, this flow looks incredibly amazing. If you uh, look over here, it's perfect because there's a little bit of water that's still left in the actual container, even after the water is poured. So I'll just try to fill it up. And you can see here that there's still a little bit of water that is swept around and you want that little layer right there. So now we can just wash off the drawer as well. And then I'll go and drill and wash the second one. We can uh, move on with our build. All right, so now that we've uh, done finished our drawers, we're going to do our last modification, which is drilling the hole in the top of our storage cart. And uh, what I like to do is just take whatever drill bit you're using and kind of spin it around so you get a, a small hole started. Um, you might be able to see that. No, you can't. Here you go. 
So that way, um, the drill bit won't skip across the surface. And it doesn't have to be perfectly in the center either. Um, you just need a hole for the bulkhead to go in. So now let us slowly do this. Make sure your drill bit is in line, it's not curving. Looks okay for me, so now let's do the drilling. Hmm, probably shouldn't have done that in my living room, but uh, you can see we have a pretty messy hole. I'll try to clean that up with maybe a uh, knife or something, make it wider. Let's see if our bulkheads fit. If not, I will have to find a way to widen the hole, and indeed, they do not fit. So, hmm, let's think. What should I do? Eh, I'll find something out. I'll get back to you guys when I do. Alright, so ironically enough, this bolt, this male adapter right here can just be threaded in. Like, the hole is perfectly shoddy enough for it to just be threaded in. So, I mean, I guess I'll just roll with it, because what I can do is just plunk that female adapter on top, and we good, fam. But, um, if you guys want to do it properly, unlike me, uh, get yourself a one and one fourth, um, one and one fourth, uh, hole drill bit thingy. Let me get my tape measure, which I seem to have misplaced yet again. This, this room is now a mess. Um, prepare to have a cleanup task ready. But if we do some measuring, this hole is about, sorry, give me a sec. This hole is about one and one fourth of an inch in diameter, something like that. Let me try to line it up. You can see it, it almost reaches the quarter line. Or it, it could be it could be three fourths, one and three fourths. It could be. But um yeah, just just get just try to figure out what the actual measurement of your uh actual like threaded portion should be since that's actually bigger than the one inch inner diameter. Uh, always be careful to make sure, see it's a one inch inner diameter pipe, so you need a little bit bigger of a hole. But I guess I'll just roll with it, because anyways, right now it's a tight seal, so that means I don't have to absolutely crank this adapter. See, even this, just hand tightening it, could theoretically be enough, because... Uh, and now I'm unloosening the bulkhead, I'm unloosening the bulkhead. But, um, technically this could be enough, because because it's tight, so yeah, we'll just we'll just leave it there. Also, I, I might add a slot in this drawer so that I can open it fully, just enough to clear the actual bulkhead, um, so I can open it fully. But we'll see if it, if I don't feel like it, I'll just do it later. Because I will have to take these out to clean them, as there there's plastic still in the drawer. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. Uh, we were just focusing on the drawer tower thing itself and in the next video we'll look at a couple other things you have to do miscellaneous probably and then start with our pvc piping so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you in the next one goodbye